Good morning, everybody. We're heading out to look for some bald eagles. Testing out a new mic today, the Boya Live mic. If you like the way it sounds, it'll be linked down in the description. Let's go look for some birds. I see the bald eagle out there just pulling in. I'm gonna try and go quiet. I wanna bring a tripod this time, get some steady video. Let's see if we can go capture. We got bald eagles and blue herons this morning. Hope this mic is working. Man, we ain't been here long. We're already seeing lots of action. I got a crane sitting here pretty close by. Seems pretty used to me now. Getting lots of flying eagles. One's going overhead, so I gotta drop my voice. Just sitting here having some coffee, trying to let them get used to me. So maybe they'll come a little closer and I can get some better shots. Another eagle just came in and landed, and I got it all on video. Man, this is a crazy morning. I love it. <laughs> So my plan with coming out here today was kind of a in the field review of the Canon R8 with the 100 to 400. I've taken it out a few times now for wildlife. Got my settings dialed in and I'm shooting it a little different than the R10. If you know on the R10, I was using the control ring on the lens to control the ISO. I wanted really finite control over that setting. So I didn't get the noise in the images. With this R8 being full frame, I'm more comfortable going auto ISO. So I have the control ring set up to control exposure compensation. And that is just working really good. But there is a downside to it too. I'm finding the 100 to 400 is just lacking in reach. I'm trying to save up to get that to the 800. But for now, this is what it is. For the most part, I'm liking this combo, but I am missing the reach this lens had on a crop frame camera. Picture quality is stunning. And I know when I get that 200 to 800 that it's really gonna make a big difference in my wildlife photography. Well, friends, I'm out of coffee. Still got our heron sitting close by. Hasn't been bothered by me a bit. And there is still a juvenile bald eagle way off in the distance, but he's up in some sticks. So can't really get any good images of him. I think it's time to head home. All right, we're back in the studio. It's time to talk about this lens on the Canon R8, the pros, the cons, and just my general thoughts on it. So I've had this lens for over a year now, and most of that time I shot on the Canon R10, and let me tell you, that was a lot of fun. So some pros and cons, it's small, it's light, it has good image stabilization, the picture quality is great for such an affordable lens, being another pro, it is very cheap for that focal length, and it has a really good reach on a crop frame camera, that's about 640 millimeters, which is just awesome. Some of the cons, f8 at 400 is not really great for background blur or for low light, and it has no weather sealing. To me, that's really the only cons. But now that I'm shooting solely on the R8, I got rid of the R10 and the RP, I'm taking another look at this bad boy. While I do still think the lens is great, I am having some disappointments in the reach on a full frame body. I knew that would be the case. I'm saving for the 200 to 800 RF that came out, but let's just take a look here at some of the images that I've shot on both cameras. And in the end, I'll give you kind of my idea of where I would lean if I was jumping into wildlife photography today. So here we have some pictures I took on the Canon R10 with this 100 to 400, and it is a nice sharp photo, and I was pretty far away from this guy. 
Here's another image on the R10, my favorite wildlife image all time, hands down, shot it in Louisiana. I just love this baby gator with that leaf there on his nose. Look how sharp that is. So this is a sharp lens and on the R10 you can get some really good photos. On the R7 you could do even better. We'll just go through these kind of fast here so you can just get an idea. Look at that blue heron's eye. It is not tack sharp, but that is pretty good. And I shot this at ISO 500, and you do see some noise there, which is my main reason for going from the R10 to full frame, is I want better low light noise handling. Look at that little deer. Look how cute he is. And I mean, you can count the eyelashes. So it was not a bad combo. The R10 with the 100 to 400, I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. It's so easy to just handhold it all day long. Another one of my favorite images here is this duck. I mean, that is a nice image. We had a good bald eagle shot. And while not tack sharp, that is pretty good. But once again, I ran denoise on this already, but you're still seeing some decent noise at ISO 1250. Very nice picture of some horses. And another one of my favorites, this little prairie dog here. I mean, that is tack sharp. And I didn't do any post-processing. So really that was a good combo. But I wanted to make a switch. I wanted to shoot on one camera instead of having two bodies, one for wildlife, one for landscape. And the R8 it was just a winner for me. I wanted to shoot log video. I wanted a full frame camera and I wanted something that'd be good just all around her. However, with this lens, can just not get close enough for my personal taste. So here's a little woodpecker. I mean, that's pretty good. That's ISO 3200, no denoise. And to me, that's just a nice film grain look. I don't need to run denoise on that. That is a nice image. I shot this deer, ISO 2500. Still very sharp, and I really like that noise. It's just like a film grain, a nice film grain at ISO 2500. But I'm struggling to get close to things like this small bird. It's a nice sharp image, but I would like to fill the frame. And that's why I'm looking at that 200 to 800. Got another horse here, still nice and sharp. ISO 500, you can't even see the noise. Shot this last week. Just look at this hair. And that is beautiful. ISO 800. Another one at ISO 800. And the noise just isn't there. This camera handles low noise really good, which is why I like full frame but I'm not just filling the 100 to 400 on it. As much as I love that lens, and I will still use it for walkabouts if I'm going on a long hike, but I'm not filling the reach for wildlife photography. Here is a bald eagle. And he was, he was pretty far away, but with that 100 to 400 on a crop frame, I could have got a lot closer. This was only ISO 640, so I probably could have handled that and got a better picture with the R10 in this lens. Shot this one the other day and I've run denoise and enhancement and all that on there. And when you zoom in, you can kind of see some of the funky blending it did. Almost looks a little oil painting. And to me, I'd rather have this right out of camera. I mean, that's a great picture zoomed out. I love it. I love the subject matter. But if I had the 200, the 800 on the R8 at ISO 2000, which I shot the set, I'd just get a lot better picture than if I used the R10 and had the shoot at ISO 2000. So just kind of my thought process here for you guys. As I stated, I'm looking to make another switch. I knew the 100, the 400 wouldn't give me as much reach on the full frame, but... It's lacking a little more than I thought. I used to shoot all my wildlife on a 50 to 500 Sigma, and that was a pretty good reach for me. If this just went a little further, I'd be happy with it. As it is now on a full frame camera, 
I just think it falls short. If you primarily shot big game, it might be a go. But if you want to fill the frame, if you want to shoot birds, I just don't think for full frame that it's quite there. So what is my thought process? What are my recommendations? This is just me. There's a thousand combinations, thousand camera systems, and people can argue this till they're blue in the face. But this is kind of my thought process. If you're just starting out, if you want something light to hike with, if you want a handhold all day long and not have any issues, I go with a crop frame with this guy right here. I loved it. Some of the most fun I've ever had in photography. And it's just a blast. The R10, the new R7, you're gonna get some great photos. You're not gonna get the best background blur. You're gonna have to watch your low light, but if you pick and choose and go out in good lighting, it's a blast. For an all-arounder, which is more what I'm leaning towards shooting, I would say full frame with this new 200, the 800. It's getting rave reviews. It goes from 6.3 to nine. So the 100 to 400, 5.6 to eight. Yeah, now you're looking at F9, but that F9 doesn't kick in till 637 millimeters to 800. So at 454, you're still at 7.1. 455 to 640, which is within this focal range. F8, same F8. So I do think that that 200 to 800 is just going to be an outstanding combination for me. I can't wait to get it. Until then, I'm still going to shoot this little guy on this camera because I love wildlife. The bald eagles are out and I'm still having fun. Now, if I wanted a dedicated wildlife, if that's all I wanted to shoot, I didn't shoot landscape, I didn't shoot macro, I didn't shoot all that, I would probably go with the R7. It's the newest and best crop frame camera that Canon puts out with a dedicated L-series lens. It's going to give you better pictures, better low light performance. Go with something like the 100, the 500, 7.1, or you can go something with an F4, even F2.8, but the smaller that aperture, the more expensive and the more costly. But with those L-series lenses and the lower F-stops, you're not gonna have the problems with the light that you have on a crop frame camera because you're gonna be able to shoot lower ISOs. And even then, all these cameras today, even the crop frames are handling low light pretty well, but I still think the full frame is a step above and beyond. So recap, for me it would be full frame with that 200 to 800 or crop frame with an L-series lens if you're really serious about wildlife. But just having fun, still taking amazing photographs, no doubt could probably even still win some competitions. A crop sensor with this 100 to 400 is still an amazing deal. So it's still an amazing lens and I'm still gonna get a lot of use out of it. All right, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and until next time.